Under the shimmering Arctic sky, thousands of reindeer move in silence, guided by herders across snowfields colder than ice itself. Each year, millions make this trek, not wild, but managed, tracked, and transported across a vast, roadless world. In these frozen migrations, ancient knowledge meets modern tools, carrying more than just animals. It carries culture, survival, and one of the most extraordinary feats in cold climate logistics. In the silence of Arctic spring, as light returns to the tundra, the herds begin to move. This is not chaos, but choreography. Reindeer know the way, and so do the people who follow them. Sami in northern Scandinavia, Nanets across Russia's Yamal Peninsula, and Chukchi further east all share a tradition of guiding reindeer through snow-laden forests, over frozen rivers, and into seasonal pastures. This movement is timed not by calendar dates, but by the land itself. When snow begins to soften, or the sun lingers longer in the sky, it's time. Preparation is deliberate. Sleds are packed with dried fish, tents, diesel, and generations of inherited wisdom. Children learn to spot weak ice, to read wind-scoured drifts, to hear the tone of a restless animal's breathing in the dark. At the heart of the process is the ability to read what cannot be seen, knowing when herds will splinter, when males will challenge each other, when the crust of snow can no longer support hooves. Some herders ride on snowmobiles now, others still use wooden sleds pulled by lead books. But whether the motor hums or the silence holds, all are guided by memory. Alongside this ancestral knowledge is a quiet revolution. Small tracking collars blink like distant stars on reindeer necks, sending signals to satellites that trace the animal's roots. Mobile apps show where herds bunch up, veer off, or stop for too long. Herders now sleep with solar chargers tucked into their clothing, warming them with body heat to keep their tools alive through the night. Reindeer don't march in single file. They swirl, pause, scatter, regroup. To guide them across hundreds of kilometers, herders use curved sticks called suapunki in the north, lassos made of braided hide, or their voices, sharp whistles, low calls, rhythms that settle or stir. Each movement has a purpose. Long stretches are broken with corral points, where herds are counted, calves marked, older animals examined. These stops are often built near rivers, not for water but for transit. Barges wait in summer, trucks in winter, depending on the terrain. In Norway and Finland, some reindeer are guided to roads, loaded onto transport vehicles, and move between grazing leases. In Russia, they might travel by ice road to distant tundra stations. In Alaska, small bush planes have occasionally lifted a handful to new grounds. But even as machines enter the picture, they never replace the human eye. A GPS unit cannot sense when the herd is anxious. A drone cannot spot frostbite on a calf's ear in a blizzard. So herders ride close, their hands bare in the cold, touching, listening, watching. In some places, rivers are the highways. When they freeze thick enough, herders cross them with sled trains. When they thaw, they float herds across in barges. The reindeer packed shoulder to shoulder, quiet, heads low, steam rising from their backs. These animals are not pushed, but followed. It's the rhythm of old stories and new maps. It's a procession that has shaped landscapes for thousands of years. And while the choreography may seem seamless, what lies ahead is anything but predictable. Because even the most time-tested routes now shift under pressure. Pressure from climate, from development, from the thin line between tradition and necessity. The Arctic does not forgive errors. Even a few hours' miscalculation can lead to frostbitten calves, collapsed sleds, or a herd scattered by wind. The herders who move reindeer through this terrain must anticipate every obstacle, and still, the terrain surprises them. Permafrost once solid for centuries now buckles underfoot. Ice roads that linked pastures and markets now crack too early or don't form at all. Entire river crossings, once frozen highways, are lost to warming spells. Migration routes shift, not because animals forget, but because industry carves new paths into the tundra. Oil roads cut across trails used for generations, and pipelines bisect feeding grounds. In Russia's Yamal Peninsula, 
Some herders must now pause for hours as convoys of trucks rumble past, a collision of ancient timing and modern extraction. In northern Scandinavia, rail lines bring their own danger. A single panic can send a herd into a fence, causing injury or death. These are not just logistical problems. They are emotional burdens. Reindeer are not anonymous cargo. Many herders know their lead animals by sight, by name, by behavior. To lose one is to lose a thread in a much larger fabric. Weather, too, has become unpredictable. A sudden thaw can expose the ground, then a freeze can seal it in ice so hard even antlers can't break through. Reindeer that can't reach lichen under the snow grow weaker. Herders may need to bring in supplementary feed, adding weight, cost and time to already arduous treks. And the cold, biting, searing, unforgiving, remains ever-present. In some regions, temperatures dip below minus 50. Machinery stops. Batteries freeze. Hands lose feeling in minutes. Yet the herders go on, wrapped in layers of wool and hide, balancing the survival of their herds with their own. Transporting reindeer also demands acute awareness of stress. These are not passive travelers. Sudden changes, noise, temperature, smell can cause the animals to panic, injure themselves, or bolt. In Norway, herders have designed quiet zones during transfers. In Russia, they monitor breathing rhythms during boat crossings. But even with care, the stakes are high. A journey delayed by just a few days can mean a lost grazing season. And in places where land rights are fragile, herders must sometimes fight legal battles to cross their own ancestral trails. For all the physical difficulty, the emotional toll may run deeper. As lands shrink and roots disappear, many herders must make painful decisions. Some reduce herd sizes, unable to feed or move them as before. Others sell part of the herd to meat processors, ending lifelines that stretch back generations. Elders pass down fewer stories. Young people face pressure to leave for cities. The migration becomes shorter, the rhythm thinner. Yet resilience persists. Herders form collectives, share GPS data, trade fuel, and supplies in remote cabins. They build new corrals farther inland, adjust departure dates, and map unfamiliar routes. Each solution is a negotiation with the landscape, with government regulations, with their own histories. These challenges are not isolated. They shape what comes next, pushing tradition to either bend or break. And still, the reindeer move, the herders follow, the land waits. In a landscape where the ground itself can shift from solid to swamp in a matter of weeks, adapting isn't a choice. It's survival. For Arctic reindeer herders, survival has never been static. While outsiders often imagine these migrations as relics from a frozen past, the truth is far more dynamic. Today, the movement of millions of reindeer across tundra, forest and river is shaped as much by satellite data as by snowfall. New tools are being layered onto old rhythms, not to replace tradition but to extend its reach into an increasingly unstable environment. Technology does not arrive in the Arctic with fanfare. It hums quietly in pockets and backpacks, barely visible beneath layers of wool and leather. A solar charger tucked into a fur parka keeps a phone alive through a dark week. A drone launched from a sled scans the horizon for missing calves, tracing tracks in the snow invisible to the eye. These small personal devices offer what the land sometimes denies. Perspective. The ability to see not just where a herd is, but where it might be in an hour, in a day, in a sudden whiteout. Herders now map out routes, not just from memory, but from aerial images shared through encrypted channels, ensuring that knowledge is passed in real time, even across hundreds of kilometers of frozen emptiness. One of the most transformative tools has been the satellite collar. In the early years, these devices were unreliable in the extreme cold, their batteries draining too fast, their signals inconsistent. But recent generations are lighter, longer lasting, and built for the brutal Arctic night. Herders use them to monitor herd cohesion, detect stragglers, and track seasonal patterns. If a group of reindeer stops moving unexpectedly, a signal is sent to a phone blinking in a tent lit by oil lamp. 
That herder, once cut off by distance, now knows something has gone wrong. Perhaps thin ice, a predator, or illness. The digital trace becomes a new way to protect an old bond. These devices do more than prevent loss. They enable coordination on a scale previously impossible. In northern Norway and Finland, herding cooperatives now share data across family groups, helping to synchronize movement, avoid overcrowding, and reduce competition for grazing. In the Russian tundra, where distances are even greater, some herders use satellite data to petition regional governments for access to emergency feed or veterinary assistance, their phone signals bouncing off the sky to reach a bureaucracy that once seemed unreachable. Transport vehicles have changed too, especially in areas where the migration intersects with processing and export. In the past, moving reindeer by sled or on foot could take weeks. Today, for animals destined for slaughter, speed is critical, not just for efficiency, but for quality. Specially modified trucks are used in parts of Lapland and northern Russia. These are not ordinary livestock vehicles. They are insulated to handle both extreme cold and fluctuating temperatures during border crossings. They feature padded floors, quiet ventilation systems, and soft lighting to reduce animal stress. Some are equipped with internal partitions to prevent overcrowding, allowing reindeer to maintain natural spacing. In cold climates, stress is not a minor inconvenience. It's a direct threat to the animal's health, and by extension, the livelihood of those who care for them. Where roads don't reach, the alternatives are equally inventive. During the summer thaw, reindeer are sometimes ferried across wide, ice-free rivers on massive flat-bottomed barges. These vessels carry live animals and their handlers together, drifting slowly across the current, surrounded by mosquitoes and mist. The reindeer stand shoulder to shoulder, their breath rising in soft clouds, while herders sing low melodies to keep them calm. In the winter, when those same rivers freeze, they become highways of ice. Reindeer move across them in long trains, pulled by snowmobiles or walking steadily over the blue surface, their hooves clicking like stones against glass. Innovation also finds its place in logistics beyond movement. The growing demand for reindeer meat, particularly in Europe and East Asia, has created a need for sophisticated cold chain systems that begin in some of the most remote settlements on Earth. Processing facilities near herding grounds Flash frees meat within hours, preserving not just freshness, but traceability. Each cut can be tracked back to a herd, a region, sometimes even a family name. Trucks designed for Arctic conditions carry these goods southward, with temperature monitors that alert drivers to even the slightest deviation. Some vehicles are now solar-assisted, generating part of their power through panels mounted on the cab roof, extending range and reducing fuel use on long, desolate routes. Behind every technological adaptation is a human decision. What to keep, what to change, what to fight for. In many indigenous communities, this has led to an unexpected renaissance. Not a return to an untouched past, but a deepening of ties to land through new means. Sami herders develop apps in their own language to record grazing rights and map ancestral routes. Chukchi herders use satellite phones to coordinate vaccine deliveries for their animals. In Alaska, training programs combine traditional sled repair with modern engine maintenance, preparing the next generation to balance wood and steel, intuition and code. And in the quiet spaces between these adaptations, stories persist, not as artifacts, but as ways of thinking, elders teach youth to read the subtle curl of a snowdrift, to understand which winds bring dry powder and which bring wet crust. These observations cannot be automated. No app can replicate the feeling of reindeer unease or the sudden silence before a storm. Technology moves the herd, yes, but wisdom still guides the pace. What emerges is not a replacement of old systems with new, but an interweaving. A GPS collar does not erase the need for a herder's watchful eye. A drone cannot replace a whistle in the wind. But together, these tools make survival more possible in a landscape where climate, economics and development press ever harder against the boundaries of what herders have always known. They adapt not to abandon tradition, 
but to protect it, piece by piece, pixel by pixel, hoof by hoof. Each reindeer crossing the Arctic tundra carries more than muscle and bone. It carries memory, culture, and the quiet determination of those who guide it through blizzards and thaw. Across vast, roadless expanses, herders still move their animals with care, shaped by centuries and sharpened by satellite collars, drones, and insulated trucks. This is not just movement, it's survival, threaded with respect for land and animal alike. It happens without spectacle, but with immense precision. These migrations are among the most challenging logistical feats on Earth, and yet they rarely make headlines. Next time you see a reindeer, imagine the hooves over ice, the barges on thawed rivers, the eyes that never stop watching. If this story caught your attention, click the next video on screen to discover more about the extraordinary networks behind your food.